Greetings, everybody. This is Sibin Dimitrov, aka A Dense for the Astral Wolf. And apparently, I just saw in real time me defeating an enemy um, in the Star Sea Conquest. And this was a substantially huge enemy as well. And I'm actually quite shocked at how well I held up. I'm going to show you guys the replay. There's two really big replays that the enemy sent against me, or well, people, so I'm going to show you guys the battle. So this guy is about the same size as me, but as you guys can see, you know, we're, uh, we're just, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, exchanging hits. As you guys can see, that is why Wings of Eternity is so effective on certain commanders. So you, you always want to have something that can help heal itself as they use that against you. But luckily our front row is holding strong and I'm very happy to see that we are doing so well. I should have realized this long ago. Um, yep, there you go. Even though they absorbed the initial damage, the shock, the, the uh, uh, terror space killed that column of enemies. So the front row is just supposed to be uh, like a bullet sponge while we uh, defend ourselves against the horrible onslaught from the enemy. And because of our beautiful, beautiful airships, um, <laughs> and the healing that our soldiers do, uh, yeah, we're just soaking up the damage and having no trouble with it at all. Um, the really fun part about this is that, uh, Roger's defensive capabilities are, are maximized b because of this. Because he constantly is, uh, re, uh, reactivating his uh there we go watch this one oh never mind we missed on that one but uh we are constantly renewing our uh defensive stance our tyrant cometh and our other numerous abilities that makes it you know horrible for the enemy to fight and even though they are doing no damage against me that means my health points on my own airships are healing up so the more damage they try to do against me, well, you know, the more I get to heal. So Rogers with the Cyan Shuttle in the front row and uh, Origin in the back row, it's devastating. And as you guys can see, even though my initial attack with the uh, Origin doesn't do much, it's a terror space that comes through. So watch this. Oh, never mind, we missed that. Hmm. It's kind of frustrating when we miss, but that gives us opportunity to just uh, do more Tyrant Cometh. And the Tyrant Cometh increases our attack and accuracy by 240% every six round. Well, no, every, uh, uh, shoot. Every, uh, every time we, uh, we go through, uh, so... Let's say that Tyrant Cometh comes on the middle front section of our soldiers. Then after the other five get to go, next time that we go, if we hit them, that will be 240% more damage. So even though they didn't um, survive, uh, even though they survived that initial hit with the, uh, with the, uh, what do you call it, uh, with the origin, we were able to destroy them with the Terra Space. That is why Terra Space is so essential for a health point commander. So even though they would have probably killed any normal commander, it's kind of nice being able to figure out the statistics of a game and see how other people play it and you know maybe use that to help benefit yourself. Now, we're going to be going against uh, Asgardian with his giant commander right here. Oh wait, no, that's the wrong commander, I'm sorry. I feel dumb. Wrong commander. Does that say immunity? No, it says absorbed and then immunity and then they get blasted by my, sh uh, by my, uh, uh, not shockwave, uh, terror space. 
So this is a uh, another kind of fun little uh, um, example of why this is kind of a fun little layout. You know, I could have sworn that my Rogers won against th this uh, Chinese fella. But maybe my Vega actually came in for backup. We're going to take a look at this and see how this goes. Wow, we actually uh, tanked that hit. Considering this is a huge commander. We actually tanked that hit very well. Come on, Rogers. I know you can hold up. Not bad. And of course we miss. Fantastic. Great job. Wow. This is a horrible, horrible battle. But as you guys can see, uh, we are uh, activating our, um, our defensive stance. So every time the enemy tries to attack us, it gets less and less. Wow, this is horrible. But, I mean, we're actually putting up a fight considering we're being hit by almost a max level commander. Or well, max uh, leadership commander. I think it's max leadership. It's a really high leadership commander, that's why. But I don't know why... Their commander left. Did they recall their commander before they lost? Or I'm not exactly sure why. Because obviously you guys can see that I'm losing. So for some weird reason. Hmm. I don't get this. Because, in all honesty, I'm surprised we were able to hold out this long against the uh, enemy commander. But, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened. They must have recalled their soldiers because I thought we were going to go on to win this one. But, you guys can still see the effectiveness of the uh, Cyan Shuttle despite us losing this battle. It's unfortunate that we lost. Well, I think we lost. Yeah, we're losing. It hurts. Yep, there goes that one, that row. Here goes this row. And here goes my last row. At least Rogers is hitting. And I'm screwed. But then what made the enemy pull back? That's the thing that I'm curious about. Because they aren't here. And obviously we still have the planet. So, did they recall, or what did they do? It seems kind of strange, if you ask me. And I'm not exactly sure why, but... There it is, I guess. Um, two wins and one loss. Not bad, considering. But that final loss was... Rough. That kind of hurt. But hey, you know, we are 204th uh, for this week. And for the season, we are 180th. So that's really not too bad considering, but um, still more a sense of like, um, yeah, sure, why not? Well, his supply is full. I don't ever use my supply. I have 1.2 million. Well, one million two hundred seventy-three thousand three hundred and four supply. So I don't know. We seem to be to be making good headway, I guess. Why did the person recall the soldiers? What about that? You know why? That's the thing that that I'm curious about. Like. Why did they recall their soldiers, or why did, did their commander suddenly disappear? Because that commander could have easily wiped out the rest of my soldiers. Yet, he's not here. He's not here. And there's no other battles commencing. So, either he recalled, or, uh... I'm not really sure. 
But hey, uh, we kept the planet. The planet's ours. Maybe he saw my Vega. Maybe that's the reason why. My Vega ain't exactly top the line, but didn't expect him to be that scary. So, I don't know. I'm not really sure what the reason is behind it, but hey, you know, that's kind of a fun little, uh, another little example of why, you know, certain layouts can be done. Now, here is a really fun idea that I suggested to the developers because this would actually um, add a lot of content to the game and keep things more fun. You know, because I was telling you guys previously how much more research I have to do and how much more um, of... Oh, look at that. We actually have... Oh, we don't have enough. Never mind. But yeah, like um, how much more resources are needed to upgrade all my stuff. Before I can get the cyan shuttle. But, uh... So I suggested to the developers we make three different arc holes. So, they will look a lot like this. Like these two. Well, more in a sense of just be customizable. But they're going to have special abilities and other kind of buffs. And one of the things that I, uh what you call it, uh, suggested is that, um, a walker arc hull, a infantry arc hull, and a airship arc hull. And the, uh, infantry arc hull would be green and very, very pretty, while the walker one would be very blue and very mystical looking. And then the airship one would be very angry and red looking, a lot like, uh, oh gee, uh, a lot like, um, boop, boop, boop. go away, there we go, a lot like these bad boys right here. The, uh, the, uh, Ethereum. So you guys see how the Ethereum, it looks kind of scary and red and angry? That's kind of what I'm, I was thinking, the arc, the, uh, the, um, the uh airship hull could look like and then something cool like the uh like the uh for for the walker hull it could look something like this kind of blue and mystical looking and then for the uh infantry something cool for them it could be like this so you know for um and one of the really cool things about the idea is uh um so you can only pick one. That's the, the thing that I was thinking about. You can only pick one arc hole out of those three. And once you pick that one, it works a lot like the uh, like the faction. So you see how the other two factions are very hostile against me, and they don't like me at all. Well, um, I was thinking something sort of along this tier system that the factions have for the arc holes. You pick one, and the other two get worse. So let's say, uh, you know, just because I'm an airship guy, I pick the airship arc hole. And what that will do is that it'll make uh, research for airships cheaper. It'll make resource efficiency better. Healing soldiers of, of the airships will be cheaper. Building them will be cheaper. Um, it will be reduced healing times, reduced, uh, training times, reduced evolution times, reduced, uh, evolution cost, reduced, uh, repurposing times, reduced, uh, loss of soldier improvement. You know how this is 1,320 and then you only get 1,161. I was thinking more along the lines of, uh, at max level. You know, you could, like, get, like, tier 11 all the way to tier 12 without losing stuff. And just kind of stuff like that. And then all the buffs of your airships of your airships will be maximized even more. So instead of just having these numbers, you then have, uh, like, blue numbers of, like, ultra-enhanced uh, settings by your arc hole. And then for the and then uh, for the airship commanders, it means their abilities will be like thirty percent more effective or something like that. 
So every level you upgrade your arc hull will be that much more levels of, uh, you know, that much more percentage of, uh, of buffs. And, uh, if you use airship, uh, equipment like the, uh, like the creator, or you use airship equipment like the, uh, like the reincarnation or stuff like that, or you use, um, airship equipment like the devil's touch, that will give it even an, a, um, a, a kind of like a hyper bonus, which will, uh, um, make it, make, um, like give these like weird special effects, much like, you know, uh, you know how monk or how these like weird uh, special effects are on like certain exclusives so like airship exclusive um uh arc after that's upgraded to level 30 or a high enough level um you will get uh you know extra you know characteristics to your uh airship level uh equipment or you can just use the regular basic um equipment that you will see right here which is really good equipment but still you know but then uh at level 30 you know you're uh you get an extra like you get like an extra 10 or 10 or 15 percent no you get like an extra 15 percent uh what you call it uh skills trigger rate but for airships only and then like, you know, so all your airship commanders get, like, massively buffed, while commanders who are not airships, like uh, walkers and infantry, they get debuffed, so they aren't as good as they would be with that one commander. Now, you can deactivate that hull and go back to your regular hull and, you know, just do the Armageddon and everything kind of resets back to normal. But one of the cool things that I was thinking about is that you can only un un only unlock one. So once you unlock one, you can't unlock the other ones. And if you want to reset this, you need to have like a real special token or like some series of a uh, of material uh, that will reset it. Because for me, I have. Uh, where's a reset token? I have a couple reset tokens, but I can't seem to find them. No, that's a reset machine. Where is it? Nope, not that one. Conquest medals. I think that's for the that weird leadership event. Here we are. Faction test reset. No, that's not a faction test reset. Whoops. Where is it? So there, there's a special token that you are able to use. And what that will do is that it will completely reset your factions back to uh, ground zero. And, uh... There's an option for that. And uh, it's like a really rare item to get. And once you use that, all these go back to zero. But the problem with that is that there goes all your uh, cosmic crystal to use. But anyway, so like I was saying, uh, so, um, so like, uh, let's say that, uh, you know, I want my, uh, my airships to be ultra buffed. You know, all your airship commanders, every single one of them that you have unlocked, and all of your airship soldiers, and every single one you have unlocked, pretty much every single aspect that affects airships will be buffed when you have that arc hole. And that would, you know, make it so that way you have, like, super enhanced attacks, super enhanced accuracy, super enhanced health points and defense, and, like, stuff that makes your airships just abysmal to deal with. Like, well, from the enemy standpoint. And, like, that would actually be, be kind of a fun way for higher level players to be able to really, uh, you know, slam each other and see, you know, how these arc holes do. And then, uh, but, um, I don't know. 
It, it was just kind of a fun idea. And then, like, you know, you can go against someone who has an infantry hole and see how you two face off against each other. And, like, you know, uh, and maybe there could be, uh, maybe much like they added in the system. Uh, where is it? Oh, get, out, get out of here. You know how how they have certain things like this they can add for your commanders? You can have like these, but permanent for your arc hole and extra benefits. So if you want to go for a, for a defensive arc hole, you can do like defense and health points and damage reduction up to a certain percentage. You can do uh, other stuff like that. And if you want to go for a full on assault, you can do attack and accuracy and critical and stuff like that. And like, you know, it could be like seven, seven skills they can add onto your... Uh, onto your stuff. So like for me, I would do max attack, max accuracy, max health points, max defense. I would do the skills trigger rate. I would do the uh I would do damage reduction. So that's six. And then maybe I would do like oh I don't know, uh I don't really care about dodge and I don't really care about um you know critical or critical damage. So, in all honesty, uh, I might just do, like, marching speed, or something interesting. Uh, but yeah, so like, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the arc hull for the airships, or infantry, or walkers, or whatever, you know, of those three you choose, your soldier heal speed would automatically be increased by like a hundred percent, and like your and like on top of the paralopers, you know your resource efficiency is boosted by another fifty percent. So, um, you know, let's say let's say it takes three hundred million to heal like a hundred airships, and that's really cheap. That's only done under like you know, like uh, those weird soldier half training event things. Then you'd, uh, you know, you'd have that, you know, 50% uh, decrease and then another 50% decrease. So it'd only be like 75 million for those hundred airships that you lost. And like, um, yeah, so like there, there would be like, you know, the base, you know, super enhancements for that arc hole. And like I said, the reason why your soldiers would get so heavily buffed is because your other two your other two soldier types would get debuffed, so they would be worse. But, you know, if your main soldier type is only one, then that means, you know, and you don't really care about the other two, then, hey, that goes great for you. But, I don't know, it's just, I figured it would be, would be kind of a fun, you know, addition to the game, because people would not only be able to show off how cool the arc looks, but you would have really cool looking arcs like owls and mine that actually serve a purpose. I mean, I love, you know, I love arc codings, but I want like an arc coding that has benefits. An arc coding that can really hyper enhance your soldiers. And that's why I was thinking airship, walker, and infantry uh, based, uh, what do you call it, um, infantry walker or airship based arc holes so they'll not only look really really cool but once you get them to a high enough level that means everything goes well and you know when you, when most of the time you use like small soldiers to you know uh like uh what you call it um harvest resources like i do like small things like this you know you don't really ever need them to be hyper enhanced and it takes years upon years of hard dedicated work to even get to tier 12 and on top of that to get anywhere near like getting like halfway to the uh or even most of the way to these advanced super airships the cyan shuttle the ic 1848 and the uh ethereals so why not give yourself an extra advantage when you're going against people who already have those soldiers, you know, unlocked. And, uh, 
because y your soldiers can only get so good. And uh, so it's kind of a fun little idea I tossed up there that will uh, kind of make the game more interesting and unusual. Because I love the idea of having cool looking arcs, but why not have those cool looking arcs look really, really cool? And, you know, like I said, that kind of weird balancing feature would kind of make things kind of cool. So people who'd have to be jack of all trades, if they really, really want to have one of their soldiers enhanced, you know, they can either stick with their, with the, uh, with their regular arc holes, or they could go for something super enhanced. And even though that preferred arc type will buff only one kind of soldier and debuff the others, that one area would be hyper enhanced. So it's just kind of a fun little idea. And you know, it would be a kind of a cool way to add new stuff into the game so that way people can uh you know have an opportunity to really uh excel. And you know, um when you're playing the game, you get like gigantic stockpiles of stuff that you don't ever use. Like I have almost 500 of these, and I have almost 500 of these, and uh, let's see, I have a stupid amount of these, and a stupid amount of these, and then I have, like, random chests and gems that I never use, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, I have 131 of these. Uh, let's see. I have four of these. And I already have all the commanders that I want. And then... Uh, let's see. I have 311 of these. And thousands of these. I have 27 Expedition Warp uh, Scramblers. I have these, which I never use. And just, like, weird stockpiles of random items that are either hard to get or stuff that you never use. Why not use those to kind of buff your stuff like you do with your combat AI? And with the combat AI, you can just use a whole bunch of crap, miscellaneous crap, to level it up. So why not give every single item in your inventory of value and use that to help buff up your arc. Wouldn't that be cool, huh? But yeah, so like I said, because I primarily do do airships and airship research, like I said, if I if I were to get the airship hole and level it up, that means stuff like this would be less expensive. While stuff like while stuff like this would be more expensive, but like stuff like this would be, you know, quicker to, uh, it'll be more resource efficient. It'd be more time efficient. It'll uh, require much less, while these would require much more. But you know, like uh, since it takes years to get to the very end of the game, and even then they keep adding new stuff. Why not, you know, give yourself a way to catch up a little bit, you know? Because it's going to take you an incredibly long time. Me included. I mean, you're saying you as a relative term. A stupid amount of time. Wow, 102, 107. That's impressive. I get a lot of stuff from harvesting resources. By the way, having this as a, as a as a wonderful buffer for your resources is great. Cuz if I remember right, the enemy uh if they plunder your arc, get shadow matter first, that fills up their uh their soldier carry capacity and then your resources after. I think that might be it. I'm not entirely quite sure. I'm still a little confused about that. But yeah, so like, you know, if you want to train soldiers, you know, normally these these suckers are like, 
or like almost ten or like nine million base. So with your arc hole, these bad boys would always be four point five million. And when the when the soldier training event comes, if they would drop down to you know two point five five million. So like, but then unfortunately, these guys would become exponentially. These guys would become more expensive because of the arc hole. So it's just kind of a fun way to see: would do you want to uh, do you want to stay regular with your regular arcs and have everything be even, or do you want to stick only with one soldier type and really boost yourself forward? Only caveat: you can only have one, like the uh, like you can the faction. You can't have all the factions be revered. You can only have one. So, I figured, you know, that would kind of, kind of be a cool way, but have a hyper-enhanced view of everything. So, everything airship. Every single aspect in the game that affects the airship will get hyper-enhanced and hyper-buffed. And then, but if you are a walker person... And a person likes to run walkers, you can do a hyper enhanced walkers, and everything that has to do with walkers will be hyper enhanced. So I don't know, like I think that would actually be kind of a really fun way to test out, you know, ways to fight against enemies because, you know, some people will will want a completely defensive arc hole, and you know they want to do airships defensively. And then the other ones uh, will want to do full attack arc holes and want to do critical and uh, attack and accuracy and critical damage and, you know, weird other effects like that. But for me, because I have my stuff and you can only choose how, however many, I would do health points, defense, attack, um, critical. Um, I don't really care too much about the accuracy. Because a lot of people have super high dodge, and you just kind of need your abilities to hit. But, like, you could do the skills trigger ray, and, you know, you can do stuff like that. And I think that would actually be kind of a really fun way to add something new to the game. Now, I would like your guys' thoughts on this. So, please, you know, feel free to leave comments below with your ideas for the game. And maybe, you know, together we can kind of make something really cool come from the game. The, the developers do seem to listen. So, why not, you know... Tell the developers to add something super unique and, and unusual to the game. That no other game I've seen does this. Well, unless, it, it's, like those, unless it's like those weird uh, roguelike kind of top-down games. Those are fun. And, but yeah, you, you get what, what, what I mean. So, you know. Yeah, like feel free to comment down below. And, you know, tell me what your guys' ideas for the games would be. And what ways the, dev the, the developers can, you know, um, what way the developers can uh, enhance the game. And maybe in time, if, if this video gets enough love and sharing around, maybe the developers can see it. And then they can see the comments section as well. And maybe they can use those ways to add, you know, stuff into the game that makes it more fun for people like you and me. Because I think that would be really, really cool. And... One of the cool things that I was thinking about is, you know how you can send items to, uh, to people in the game? <laughs> Let's say, uh, Mr. Owl, he's a very dear friend of mine, and I really appreciate him. So I'm going to be sending him 999 Child Matter, because he's my good friend. But, um, let's say, uh, you know, let's say you don't have, uh, certain things to upgrade your, uh, your arc, your, your arc hole. For your walkers or airships or infantry, you can uh, you can either trade stuff in a market or you can uh, have someone give you items. And I think that would be really, really cool because that way people who don't have much money or people who have trouble in the game can actually have some benefit and help by other people who have more. It's not not a communistic view. It is a charity view. So to speak, like, you know, you aren't you aren't forced to give, you know, your stuff to people. But if you want to help someone and give them stuff to, you know, to 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 benefit them and allow them to grow, you can send them items and uh, that can be used to uh, upgrade their arc 
hold for the infantry walkers or airships. And, you know, I think that that would actually be a really cool way to, you know, put a sense of unity in the game. Because what costs a game the most amount of, mo most amount of money and, you know, ex uh, experience for players is unobtainable, you know, unobtainable, you know, um, goals. Six years ago, six, when I started this game, the highest level of soldier they had was it was a tier seven chimera. I mean, tier six chimera. No, this is tier seven. Tier seven chimera. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten new soldiers. Six years ago. That kind of tells you guys how almost unobtainable this is. Like you have to be ridiculously uh, dedicated and diligent in playing the game and getting yourself up there. And six years of playing this game, I am three levels away from being able to unlock these. So why not the developers add stuff, more stuff in between these areas, these massively high areas and add more stuff that people can enjoy and fill out so that way they can still have a sense of accomplishment and get accomplishment while still being able to grow and be able to you know reach those goals because unfortunately as far as I know the developers aren't going to make it easier for people like me to get the advanced tier 12 soldiers. But if they can add stuff that makes it, you know, better for you, even though you don't have, you know, the advanced tier 12 soldiers, it'll give, you know, all of us an option to uh, enjoy the game more and have new ways to benefit us more. So that way, uh, so many people don't quit. Because that's what hurts the game the most. It's because you can't ever get to that end level at a reasonable time. Six years of playing this game. <clears throat> playing this game since, oh gee, 2017? 2016? Uh, give me a quick second. I'm going to pause the video. Yeah, so as you guys can see, June 5th, 2017, May 25th, 2017, December 10th, 2016, September 21st, 2016, August 12th, 2016, July 23rd, 2016, July 23rd, 2016, July 16th, 2016, July 16th, 2016, July 15th, 2016. So you guys can see that uh, I have been playing this game for an incredibly long time and have devoted a lot of time and effort into this game. So I think if the developers add more stuff that we can enjoy and be able to help us grow, that'll make the end goal more obtainable without giving us like the the easy button. My father calls it the easy button. And sometimes there's people who uh, just buy thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff in the game and shoot their way off into the end immediately. And that's called the easy button. But for us, all we want is just a little bit of a helping hand. Something that can actually make it a little more obtainable and not so grindy and depressingly slow, you know? So, I don't know, guys, you know, like I said, please feel free to give me your input because I think having a really cool arc system in the in the game would be kind of a really cool way to way to go. And you know, this is the uh, the information that I submitted. So, you know, please feel free 
to slowly and ever so surely, you know, just take a look, you know, pause this, go ahead and read it. I'm scrolling down ever so slowly, so that way you guys can take a look at my idea. And yeah, you know, maybe you guys can make more sense out of this. I know that there is sometimes a language barrier between uh, developers and support staff when it's a, uh, a game that's made in, a, you know, from a different country. So, you know, maybe you guys can kind of make more sense of this and hopefully help, you know, the, the developers kind of see where I'm trying to go at. Because unfortunately, 40 minutes of me talking in this video cannot be summed up in just a few texts. And as you guys can already see, I already give them like a wall of text. And I feel bad because sometimes not having explanations of stuff is kind of difficult. And as you guys can see through this entire conversation I'm having with developers, trying to give them this cool new idea and something interesting to kind of give people like you and me more of a fighting chance, you know, I think that would actually be, be kind of a fun way to go about it. Now, um, like I said, you know, maybe they'll actually take this into, you know, consideration. Maybe not. It just kind of all sorts of depends on what they do. So, yeah, you know, like I said, guys, please give me your thoughts and input um, in the comments down below. And, you know, tell me what kind of cool ideas you guys would want in the game. And maybe together we can, you know, uh, you know, tell the developers cool ways to make the game even better. Because I know that a lot of people talk bad about developers, but they are still people. They are still individuals behind that screen and that are developing the game. So, you know, why not try to find ways to help both of us? So, maybe we can find a way to add some new cool stuff in the game that give people like you and me, uh, the average Joe, a more of a fighting chance and a way to really sock it to the pay-to-win players, you know? But yeah, so, I figured that would be kind of a fun way to do things, so, yeah. But anyway, this video is starting to get a little long, so I'm going to have to finish it here, but... Yeah, uh, this has been Sabin Dimitrov, aka Dense for the Aster Wolf, and this is just kind of a fun little idea um, for input of the game. You guys stay awesome out there, and always remember, God bless.